So I'm going to kind of go through some horror stories that I've encountered, uh, things that I've put in place uh, that has helped me out in the four years that I've been doing project management. Um, and then hopefully there'll be some takeaways for you guys and everyone will be happy at the end. So, like I say, I'm Ashley Johnson, uh, lead project manager at Access, based in Manchester. Uh, if you want to hurl abuse at me on Twitter, then it's at Johnson with four N's because every other one was taken. Which is <laughs> <laughs> slightly annoying. So yeah, like I said, work at Access. Um, got some cool clients, worked with BAFTA, headed up there uh, over the course of nine months. Uh, was it seven, eight websites? Yeah, with full migrations, uh, Salesforce integration, payments. Uh, it was a bit of a, a bit of a minefield. Uh, okay, good in the end. Won some awards. I uh, also work with Cooperative UK, Smart Focus, uh, Sentinel. Uh, so yeah, quite a quite a mix of clients. So the first Johnson project, which I did try to make rhyme with Blair Witch, but it didn't work. So there's the icon and the. The eyes of doom. Uh, so yeah, I've been, <laughs> been a project manager for four years now. Uh, started off life as a designer, and I didn't really like that very much. Um, so I thought, oh, turn my hand to being a developer. Turns out I wasn't actually very good at that. But what I was good at was telling people what to do. Uh, so that's how I came about to manage projects. So my first one was a complete disaster. Um, it was for a company called Little Moo Cakes. Uh, at the time, I was working at quite a small agency, so we'd get work in, and I'd basically be handed it and sort of deliver that. So I thought, right, I know exactly what I'm going to do. I've had a, I've had a meeting. Uh, she was nice. Told me kind of what she was after. It was all a bit woolly, um, as meetings usually go sometimes. Uh, so I cracked on, and I was like, right, I'll just do a design. It turns out that doing a design and then going, there you go. She was like, oh, well, you've not put a carousel, and... Want prices to be there, and yeah, basically it was a pile of crap. But she did make a nice cake for the MWWs group, so that's always good. That was a Drupal 8 launch for the birthday. No, tenth birthday. Tenth birthday. There you go, she went by Phil. Is it Phil? Uh, yeah, so like I said, I dived in, and that was terrible. Turns out that I'm not actually Mystic Meg. Although, if you are psychic, me after because we could do some psychic designs <laughs> we can just crack work out when we're done. Um, no one? <laughs> so uh, excuses I've heard from our team at Access why they don't like doing any planning. I don't have enough time. <sighs> yeah, don't have enough time. So my answer to that is make time. Uh, a lack of resource to plan. Well do it, shut yourself away, give yourself a day, two days, um, yeah, put the phone on hold, what, what's it, <coughs> silencer, sounds like a good, uh, yeah, and just plan it out, plan it out, uh, oh, there's no budget, that's also a good one, um, so, lack of budget should not be a justifi justifiable reason for not planning projects, because inevitably, by the time you go through, uh, you'll come to a point and be like, oh crap, I could have actually captured that at the start rather than halfway through, and then you've got to reopen the design phase, and everyone starts, including the designer, the dev, client, everyone involved, basically, and your budget. Um, so yeah, saving the long run. So, uh, planning, boring. Uh, it's not the sexiest of jobs, um, much like writing the spec or making a project plan. In fact, that Sounds like I'm undermining my own job. But <laughs> um, we've, we've introduced Eat Your Frogs, uh, which sounds a bit odd, but I will elaborate. So the first thing you do each morning is to eat a live frog. You can go through the day with the satisfaction of knowing that's probably the worst thing that is going to happen to you that day. <laughs> so do I have any volunteers who would like to eat a frog right now? Come on, then. <laughs> Does anyone else want a Freddo? I bought 12. <laughs> Can I throw them? Is that allowed? Health and safety. One. 
Oh, I feel precarious if I throw it at the back, so I'll run it over. <laughs> So yeah, we, we go with the eaty frogs, so just get the crappy tasks out of the way, and then you've made space in your day to do the things that you like doing, like updating tasks on Jira, or <laughs> scheduling. <laughs> um, so why is planning important? So we've heard the excuses, uh, it's pretty simple really, you define and manage your scope, identify risk, Woo. break it down, so when is stuff going to be done at a given point. Uh, Give yourself realistic milestones and deadlines. There's, I've seen four week project plans and it's like, do this then, this then, this then, but then feedback isn't provided, so that day slips, and then everything slips, and then you're left with your knobs in your hands. Um, track progress, so with uh, realistic milestones and deadlines, you can actually go, right, we're doing okay, we've got a day in hand, or that task took less time than I actually thought it would be. So that's always nice. And secure a resource. And the right resource as well. So, project scope. Sorry, I'm just going to have some water. Terribly from the from last night. <laughs> Brick lane curry wasn't a good idea either. But the less we say about that, the better. <laughs> so, defining scope. Um, talk. I always find that, kind of, you go to a meeting, you do your initial kickoff. So you've done your quote, you kind of know what they're after. You have, a, you have a meeting, and then you kind of go away, squirrel away on some stuff, come back, and then ta da! Um, but I find kind of just having a formal meeting with people who are going to be involved in the project actually helps to irk out some functionality that they may not have thought about, or they go, oh, well, we just thought you'd do that, which is a, which is a classic. Uh, so I find talking is always good. Uh, time, so how much time against your budget have you got to deliver the project and does that feed into kind of other business items like when can we invoice it and why can't we invoice it? Oh, because it's not finished. <coughs> so team, I was going to flash up a picture of time team, but I thought that'd be a bit sad. Uh, so keep in mind your team and their expertise and uh, basically what you're able to do. Assumptions, assume, makes an ass out of you and me, which is a, a thing that I regularly say in the office. Because assumptions, you can assume that that's how they want it until you've actually defined it with them, or written it down and gone, is that what you were trying to say? Then? So uh, objectives, so are the objectives for the site, and that's probably a wider thing rather than just the technical side of it. So. Is it for a launch of a new product? Is it to help with a rebrand that they're doing? That kind of thing. So if you've got the objectives in mind, then you can crack on. Uh, internal. So I always find that someone asks for something, and I go, hmm, have we done that before? And then I'll go and talk to a developer or account manager, and they will say, yes, we have, and here's the documentation around it, and here's how much it costs. This is when it was delivered, and was it profitable, yes or no? So that's always good to keep in mind. Uh, key requirements, <coughs> so it kind of feeds into your objectives and uh, yeah, it feeds into your objectives. Uh, the expected outcome, so what does the client want at the end? What are they expecting? Have expectations been set? Because um, if you launch a site or you give it to them to test and they go, ooh, that wasn't how I expected that to work. I always thought you were going to do this. So kind of taking this path should eke that out, which is good. So, risk. Do we all like risk? No one likes risk. Oh, this guy, he's risky. He put his hand up. Uh, so project risk. Uh, identifying project risk, you could kind of split it down into four. So yeah. <laughs> He strolled straight in and straight out. Um, <laughs> project risks, fuck this. Um, so, has anyone had issues before where they thought something's going to be dead good and then 
you start working on it, and then you think, oh shit, that's actually going to take two times as long. Hey, it happens to everyone. And do you project plan? I should have asked actually. How many people are project managers? Yay! <laughs> In the middle? Oh, fair enough. <laughs> um, you have to do it all. Well, I, it's like, so, so I, you know, as a, as a designer and builder, half the time I have to go in and put project, project management stuff in place mm. so I can work with a particular client because they don't get what they need to have to do in order for me to even do my job. Yeah, so you're literally spanning everything in order to I get it done. Uh, so yeah, uh, if we break it down, there's technical risks, um, and that could be the technology you're using. So I'm assuming most people here use Drupal at Drupal Camp. <laughs> God. Um, yeah, but you might be using Laravel, like Node, whatever it might be. Uh, so technology is always a thing. Open source, obviously, is a good way to go, but client doesn't necessarily know that to start with, as I've found before. Uh, performance, so that can be an issue if you've kind of spec'd out server and it worked on local or works on my machine. Not, not, not the right excuse. Um, so bear in mind performance. Uh, reliability of the site as well. So do you need to guarantee uptimes? Can you guarantee set up times? Um, can you say that what you 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 have built is reliable? Uh, and then the, the quality of what you have created. Internal, um, so that's resource. Does anyone have internal fights about resourcing? Yeah. <laughs> God, it's not just me then. That's good. Um, yeah, resource is a big thing. You want a particular person for your project, and then they're on another project, and you think, oh, shit. <laughs> that's <laughs> that's going to take another week on top. Um, so yeah, just making sure that you understand that yeah, the resource that you want is there. Uh, knowledge, so it kind of feeds into who you've got on your team and who's the right person for the job. And if you do give it to the uh, intern, is he going to make a dog dinner of it and <laughs> push it to live and everything's going to be sadness will ensue. Uh, yeah, so experience kind of rolls in with the knowledge side of things. And dependencies is the stuff within the agent that agency that needs to happen before other things, and you take them into account. External ones. Ooh, third parties. Who likes third party integrations? <laughs> <laughs> Who likes managing them? <laughs> no one. <laughs> so, yeah, third parties, I give a massive wide berth. So from doing kind of Salesforce integrations, it was like, oh yeah, it seems pretty straightforward. We've done that before. Then there'd be a curveball that uh, they want to, hello, new person, um, that they want to, I've lost my train of thought now. I shouldn't have said hello. Uh, <laughs> third part is, yes, I give it a wide berth. So like we integrated a site with Salesforce, but then it turns out that there was another element that needed to sit between Salesforce and the website. So we had to integrate with that instead, because all of their POS machines fed into this server that pushed out data, um, and that was risky. Uh, data migrations, so kind of getting a jump of what you should be migrating from, let's say, a legacy system or a uh, .NET site, whatever it might be, kind of getting that as soon as you can. People do that already, or do they kind of go, oh shit, forgot about that. <laughs> Better ask the agency that we're getting the site off. Um, client, so clients are always risky. <laughs> oh, I, I didn't agree to that. Oh, I've got it in the contact report that you did. Um, so yeah, giving clients a wide berth as well. Because <laughs> they, they can be... <laughs> I love my clients though, so... Uh. <laughs> Uh, and integration, so that kind of feeds into the third, third parties side of things. Um, integrating anything can be a bit of a chuffy nightmare. 
Uh, and then we've got Projman. Uh, I couldn't fit project management into the box to make it look nice, so I shortened it. So scheduling, if you're creating a project plan, does that match up with uh, what you've got resource-wise with the team that you want to try and get on the project, if that makes sense? Uh, equipment might sound a bit silly, but does everyone's computer working? Have you got the right servers in place? That kind of stuff that sometimes creeps up in. It's like, oh yeah, I told you last year that my MacBook doesn't have a screen. Right. What, what have you been doing? <laughs> I've been using an external monitor. Um, tools, is there, like if you use, does anyone use Jira? Sweet. So, do you let clients go on there, or do you, no? Yeah. yeah. Yes and no. How come no? Who ever said no? <laughs> Just confuse them. Yeah. So, from a kind of onboarding training point of view, is that too much? Really? Why does that say done? <laughs> okay, cool. Hello, new person. Um, and then methods. Do people use the same methodology for all projects, or do you take it on a case-by-case -case basis? Open-ended question. <laughs> Anybody chime in? Constantly adapt it as you learn more about the project. Yeah, so, and do you take that on a client basis as well? Has, has anyone come to you and gone, right, I want to do Scrum and I'll be on your daily stand-up on the call? Do you want to finish the presentation? <laughs> <laughs> Good stuff. So, the breakdown. Well, it's basically a jump shot. Um, so, people do project plans, or do they go, oh, we're going to do it agile and we'll have four two week sprints? Yeah? But, they, but you do document it. Yeah. Cool. So, good things <coughs> to consider on your project plan uh, client tasks. Um, making them accountable for tasks that they have to do is always nice because you can say, well, you're supposed to give me that yesterday. And they go, oh, I, I, I didn't remember. So like, oh, I told you on the weekly update. Um, so you can hold clients accountable. Revision time. Um, so that's kind of enough time to review what you've done, both from internal and external point of view. Dependencies. Uh, I will actually go into these in more detail. Um, but they're pretty basic things. Uh, lag resource allocation, and project milestones. So if we start with dependencies, so that's basically a uh, great way to, oh god, I've lost it, let me read my notes. Dependencies, dependencies are a great way to adjust project sh schedules and set client expectations. Um, so phase X, task A cannot begin until phase X, task B is complete. Or my mantra for today is, Ash cannot start drinking beer until his presentation is complete. <laughs> my dependency being the presentation that I have been worrying about. <laughs> um, so yeah, I mean, from a dependencies point of view, oh, bollocks. Um, kind of anything unexpected that slips in, you can account for it, basically. Uh, so lag, so that's the term associated with the amount of time expected between tasks. So we, oh, there's a real life version of life. <laughs> <laughs> Does no one play computer games? <laughs> yeah, can't try. <laughs> Bosh. Uh, so a hypothetical question. You've allocated eight hours for a homepage design. How do you approach it? Open question. Do you get it all done in one day and then send it back to him? Send it to the client and then go, there you go, it's done. Or do you break it down? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I can answer it. I've got a slide. Bosh. So you've got to wait for your like. You can have a Fredo for that if you want. <laughs> In fact, do you know what? You can have the other six and share them amongst your <laughs> friends and peers. I mean, I get <laughs> yeah, you can throw them if you want. Uh, they're one pound twenty-five now, which is outrageous. They used to be ten foot. <laughs> 
Uh, yeah, so rather than, I've, I've seen people on my team take an eight hour, seven hour task, schedule it in for one day with design, and then they've gone, oh poo, I've not actually accounted for revisions, obtaining sign off, if it needs to go back into design. So that's kind of how you would break it down. So you've got three and a half hours design, version one, you've got a day of lag. Uh, so that's for the client to review, but you can obviously, if they're busy, you do it in tune with their schedule. Uh, so it comes back in, they want to make the logo bigger. Ooh, classic. Um, two hours revision, one day lag for mole feedback. Uh, they go away, they show it to the people internally. It's all happy smiles. So two and a half hours just to pick off any last amends. And then you've got uh, another day's worth of lag for your client to review and to sign off which is what we like. So, an eight hour task can take up to six days, but I've seen people before think that it'd take a day. And they get horribly surprised when it does take six days. Like, oh, it's all off kilter. Um, so yeah, shock factor. Resourcing is a huge subject in itself. Does anyone <coughs> schedule their teams? Or do you have traffickers? Or yourself? Open question. We have uh, coordinators right. that schedule resources to projects and they see the pipeline of work and get appropriate input. Cool. Because kind of at access I'm basically responsible for scheduling everything that's coming in as well as everything else that's going on. So like maintenance contracts, you obviously need to be able to meet those SLAs um, and it all becomes a bit of a nightmare. Does anyone else have the responsibility of scheduling in yeah. All right, you'll like this. What, what, what tool do you use to do it? Don't say spreadsheet. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh. I'm sorry, that sounded mean. It's okay. <laughs> it works for you. Um, but what I would recommend is Flow. Um, do you have separate jobs with different job numbers, that kind of thing? No, it's very basic. Just it's a lot of colours. A lot of colours. <laughs> yeah, so what, what this does is you, you can. Copy it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, including the tasks. <laughs> Someone's on holiday. Um, yeah, so basically, Float is a really good tool for, like you said, overseeing what's what's coming up, scheduling in people, seeing how much time you've got allocated. It also does reports off the back of it, so you can see if you're at capacity, kind of. 70 to 80 percent of your team are going to be on tasks, um, which is handy. Because is it, is it what, sir? Redundant to Jira. Redundant to Jira. Well, mm, mm, kind of. Because you've got your tickets on Jira, but then you've also got your projects. So, from at Access, we have projects, maintenance contracts. Everything goes onto Jira's tickets. <laughs> but then, in terms of what people should tackle or what project they're going to be on for that week is then done through this because uh, the rest of the agency are then scheduled on that. So the creative department and the account management department and the content department. So how would the tasks here end up with your own together? Yeah, so <coughs> it's basically an easy way for Paul to go to this and go, right, that's, that's what's pressing for today. I need to get it cracked out. It seems to work. Yeah. Can I just add, Uh, sadly, I'm doing that manually. Um, there is no API for Jira. Yeah. So this is slightly higher level than Jira. Yeah. This this is literally. Client based. Yeah. So you can say, all right, you're assigned to this client for three weeks, or I can see there some days people are doing quite different projects. Yeah. So that's. So basically, it's a digital whiteboard. Hmm. <laughs> Without the whiteboard. Yeah. We have to have a whiteboard at our place. It's all sticky. You can't get that level of detail in there, can you? So no. Yeah. <laughs> Plus, you'd spend all your time doing post-it notes. The good thing is, well, <laughs> you, can, you can obviously throw in a project and sort of nudge everything else along, which obviously, if you're on a whiteboard, you can rewrite it all. Which is great for our project, but it always gets forgotten on the yeah. whiteboard. Yeah, plus, we, we have some people who go, oh, yeah, we'll do that for the client. And then two weeks later, go, oh, you, you didn't schedule it. Um, so they can actually see, yeah, it's basically agency wide, they can see how busy we are. I can see how busy they are. Yeah, it's handy. It's a high-level thing, tool. 
Uh, and then we've got milestones. Milestones are good. I treat them as hot dates. <laughs> Four undateables. Who knows? Um, but yeah, basically, adhering to your hot, your hot dates. <laughs> uh, tracking your progress, ensuring you're on track, and everyone's in the know, including yourself and the client. Um, oh, poo, my battery's going to run out. So finally, uh, put it into practice. So define and manage scope, identify and minimize your risk, make it manageable, be realistic. Um, if you can't squeeze it into two days, don't. If you have to explain why, do so. Uh, track your progress, make that part of your weekly updates. Um, if you've got a set kind of template for it, then whip that in there. Uh, secure the right resource. Uh, oh, I that slide. Failing to plan is planning to fail. Uh, planning up front doesn't necessarily guarantee that you are going to make it on time, on budget, with a happy team and a happy client smiley face. But it does help in the long run because you've done everything up front rather than firefighting as you go through. Any questions? I see, Phil. <laughs> Thanks for your support. <laughs> what other tools do you use apart from Flow? Uh, we use Jira for issues, Float for scheduling, Slack for messaging. Is that it? Uh, we have an internal system that is a bag of shit. Um, <laughs> it's called Adnet. <laughs> oh, is it being filmed? Oh. <laughs> They'll blank it out. But any more? Yes, it can. Yeah, I think you've got to do some fiddling, but it works. You can also hook it up to Slack, or you can make it send daily emails, so no one actually has to check the actual link. They can just get an email with, "All right, you got to do this, this, and this." Go forth and be awesome. Have you found that there's a particular format? Yeah, we, we tend to do workshops because that's usually what irks out all the detail. Like you can do a call and you can get them to send you a list of their favourite websites. But yeah. I like the look of this one. Um, could we borrow that element from there? But yeah, doing a workshop and getting down and dirty with the client is usually the, the best way to get results. Because I mean, that's what we did with BAFTA. And yeah, we normally take a the workshop with the range of sort of elements of the business I've turned to, so I've had at least a developer, at least a senior designer, at least a project manager and a and then the client, that client's um, account director. So the team and we a good for certification and we record their requirements in myriad of different ways to you know, no more board sketches and uh, and what have you. And um, because that senior designer is there, they would then work with any other designers at the back at the office, but which puts you in a much more controlled sort of opinion of this design. Well, um, can I ask a special bonus question? You, Do you, you have can. any particular um, killer app um, facilitation tools that you use that you found really useful for, for getting information out of people? Apart from Deer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Deer and meetings. Um, we've used InVision. Have you used InVision before? That's pretty cool. So if you do wireframes, you can upload them into InVision, oh, and it's like yeah. clickable, yeah. clickable wireframes yeah. basically. Yeah. yeah. But then do that with designs and kind of pull in feedback there rather than Microsoft Word documents. Mm -hmm. Or I think my favourite was an Excel doc with little appended notes. I thought, yeah. Yes, I'll go through this document. Thank you, and waste two hours of my life.
Any more for any more? <clears throat> oh, it's only half an hour. <laughs> it doesn't matter. But there we go, thanks. <laughs>